everyone. I'm Dr. Sue Edinger, also known as Dr. Sue Cancer Vet. I'm a board certified veterinary cancer specialist, and I'm really excited to be here to tell you about the new Q Vet Cancer Screening Test. In this video, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the test, when you should be using it, and how to be able to talk about it with your pet owners. As you know, cancer is a common cause of death in our patients. It is estimated that 50% of dogs over the age of 10 will die of cancer. And we know that early detection is so important, but what is the best way to screen for cancer in our patients? We don't have good available screening tests until now. So what's gonna be the best way to use the new Q test for cancer screening in your practice? What I think a good way would be middle-aged and older dogs. So depending on the size of the dog, for most dogs, it's going to be about seven years and older in their annual screening test. So when they're coming in for routine blood work, I recommend including the new Q test in their annual blood work. One very important thing to note is that they need to be fasted for that blood test. And we're recommending a minimum of a six-hour fast. A couple of things that I think pet owners are really going to like, it's an affordable test, it doesn't require sedation, and it's non-invasive. And let's talk about high-risk cancer breeds. This is not an all-inclusive list, but I think about golden retrievers, Labrador retrievers, German Shepherds, Rottweilers, Bernese Mountain Dogs, flat-coated retrievers. Those are some of the breeds, right? So let's think about running this test when those dogs are younger. And I'll be honest, those middle-aged and older dogs, I actually personally recommend that they come in twice a year. So I'm gonna be running the new Q test twice a year with their routine blood work. Another use for the new Q test is when you have a high suspicion of cancer. And the nice thing about it, it's a simple blood test. So say you're concerned that your patient has hemangiosarcoma and you can't get an ultrasound scheduled that day. So you can start with routine blood work add the new Q test to your routine blood work and get that back while you're trying to schedule maybe your chest x-rays and your ultrasound for another day. Let's walk through a case. With that, I'm going to show you how to actually submit the test, how to prepare the sample for shipping, and then also what it's like when you get the report back, which will guide you with what to do with the results. Let's talk about Bailey. She is an eight-year-old female spade boxer who's coming in for her annual checkup. But when she comes in and you're talking to the owners, they actually say, you know what? We're glad she was due for her annual exam because she's been a little bit off for the last couple of days. She's just been a little bit picky for her food. But other than that, she's doing great. No vomiting, no diarrhea. So in talking with the owners, you decide in addition to a minimum database, a CBC, a chemistry panel, and a urinalysis, you tell them about this new Q cancer screening test and you'd like to submit it. And they give you their consent. So what do we need to do to get Bailey's sample? First thing is make sure that Bailey has been fasted at least six hours for the sample to be most accurate. Number two is we're going to pull that sample from a peripheral vein and we'd like five mLs in an EDTA tube. So that's going to be a purple tube. After that sample has been pulled, we need to spin that within one hour for 10 minutes. And then that is going to be shipped overnight on ice. And that is going to go to Texas A&M to the GI lab. We get back Bailey's score at the end of the week and her score was 618. Unfortunately, that score is considered high to very high. And we get back, as you can see on the report, a very nice interpretation that guides us through what to do with the, these results. And we know that scores greater than 600 are consistent with common cancers such as lymphoma and hemangiosarcoma. So what do I tell Bailey's owners? I tell them that I'm concerned that she potentially has cancer again, with the most common cancers being lymphoma and hemangiosarcoma. And I'd like her to come back in for a further workup with tests such as an abdominal ultrasound, chest radiographs, and potentially lymph node aspirates as indicated. It is important to consider other non-cancerous differential diagnoses that could potentially cause a high score as well. The most common ones to consider are severe inflammation, sepsis, severe trauma, and pancreatitis. Sometimes you may get back a moderately elevated test result. What to do with those? A couple of things to think about is one, make sure that your patient was fasted. If they weren't fasted, 
simply have them fasted and repeat the test. Another thing to think about if you have a moderately elevated patient and you're not sure if they have cancer is you could repeat the test in about three to four weeks. I truly hope this video was helpful in ways to use the new Q test and how we can incorporate it into our everyday practice. Early cancer detection is so important and we haven't had a cancer screening test and now we do. So we need to embrace this test and help our clients figure out when to use it and the best way to incorporate it into our everyday practice. I truly believe that we have a way to make a difference in our clients and our pets' lives, and hopefully they can live longer and live well. So please feel free to reach out to me or anyone on the Volition team. Again, we're excited about this test and feel free to reach out to us.